Good day, my name is Rani Von Reed. I am the managing senior physician at the clinic and polyclinic for epileptology at the University Hospital in Bonn. Good day, my name is Jan Kukrovsky. I am a specialist doctor working at the clinic and polyclinic for epileptology in Bonn, and today we would like to talk about the concept of vagus nerve stimulation. We have been familiar with the concept of vagus nerve stimulation for over 20 years. It has been successfully used in the treatment of epilepsy. In the traditional application, implantation of a generator and a wire under the skin is required. Today, we would like to talk about transcutaneous vagus nerve stimulation, which does not require such an implantation and can be applied relatively easily in the area of the left ear, similar to wearing headphones. Perhaps it would be quite interesting if we demonstrate the device. My colleague, Dr. Kapowski, has brought one with him. This is the newer version. You can see a very simple device and an ear electrode that the patient, in this case my colleague, can easily insert and stimulate. Now you might be wondering a bit. I am stimulating the ear, and what does it have to do with my brain? When this part of the earlobe is stimulated, the impulses are transmitted to the brain via the vagus nerve. You can see the small device where the patient or the patient herself can adjust the current until they feel a slight tingling sensation. It's not uncomfortable, it shouldn't hurt, but it's a good control to make sure. Ah, the current is indeed coming through, I can feel it. And you see, my colleague simply plugged the small device into his pocket. So, as long as it's stimulating, which should be done for four hours a day, ideally one hour at a time, you can continue with your usual activities. You can, for example, watch a movie or play the piano. You can also work during that time. Many patients stimulate continuously for four hours, then they're done. And the device also offers the possibility to control how much of the planned stimulation time you have completed. Patients and caregivers naturally love that. The device tells you, did you do well? Or, hey, did you perhaps forget something? And we naturally also find this very useful for therapy monitoring, because we can also see how the device is being used. Overall, the device is very well tolerated. There may occasionally be some issues with skin irritation, but there is nothing noticeable in the large published studies. But patients don't just use it because it has few side effects, but primarily because of its effectiveness. Aber die Patienten nehmen das natürlich nicht nur, weil es nebenwirkungsarm ist, sondern in erster Linie natürlich wegen der Wirksamkeit. Exactly. And ultimately, when you look at it and review the literature, it's comparable to the implanted variant. Essentially, you can say that more than half of the patients experience a reduction in seizures by more than half. This has ultimately also been shown or confirmed in studies of transcutaneous vagus nerve stimulation. And as for tolerability, we've already heard quite a bit. The side effects are relatively minor. My colleague has already reported that there may be occasional irritation in the area of the left earlobe. Side effects such as hoarseness or a cough have been observed very rarely in our clinic with the use of transcutaneous vagus nerve stimulation. Yes, there is one downside to mention at the end, and that is that transcutaneous vagus nerve stimulation is not covered by statutory health insurance, and therefore a separate application is necessary. If you need help with this, then your current healthcare provider, either us or another leading neurologist, will be happy to assist and accompany you in submitting such an application. In summary, we've said that the tolerability is good, the concept is proven, and side effects are minor. With that, we would like to close. We wish you a lot of fun with the application. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Tschüss.